Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Our text for today is from Galatians chapter 3 verses 23 through 29, read just a few moments ago. And we give you a reminder that on this day we celebrate not only the mark of the covenant, but this is the first blood shed by our Savior for our salvation under the obedience of the law. You may be seated. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We have before us here in this text a most beautiful description of law and gospel. Now, for that reason, I couldn't preach on any other reading. <laughs> this is just so precious and so plain and clear. We have before us also a text that easily divides itself for a teaching sermon. So that makes it a little bit easier for us as well. As we look at those two main teachings of Scripture, law and gospel, we may often think about them as simply things. Well, this is the law, that's a thing, and this is the gospel, and that's a thing. When in fact... The law and the gospel really are a way of life. Now ponder that for a moment. The law and the gospel are really a way of life. Hmm. As we look at the law, we understand that it prescribes what we are to do. It tells us what is right and what is wrong. It tells us where we should go and where we should not go. And the rough part of making all of those demands is this, that when we look into the mirror of that law, we see that we do not fulfill it. If we could be saved by keeping the law, we would have to keep it absolutely perfectly. And there is none of us who can do that. And remember, if we break the law in just one little thing, the whole Law is broken. It's like a ring. This is the law. And if you break one little infraction on one part of it, the whole ring is broken. So it is with the law. So what are we to do? Well, more than just feel guilty, the Lord calls us to repentance and life. But look at what the Apostle Paul tells us was the purpose of the law. He calls it our guardian, one who is in charge over us, one who took children and raised them up, who taught them and made sure that they learned their social manners and everything else until they should reach that point of adulthood. The law was our guardian, teaching us right from wrong and what to do and not to do. The law was, on, was an imprisoner of us because there was no escaping its demands nor its conviction of our souls. But once the gospel was fulfilled, the gospel that we hear on every page of the Old Testament, once the gospel was fulfilled in the birth, life, death, and resurrection of Jesus Christ, the way of God's people changed. The way of God's people became a way of grace. For indeed, we are united together with Christ, not only through our baptism, but by daily living faith, which the Holy Spirit instills within our hearts. Remember in Romans we also read, faith comes from hearing, and the message is heard through Christ. It is the message of Christ that calls us to faith and works faith within us by the power of the Holy Spirit. We would have no idea where to turn unless it were for that message. The law is an important precursor. That is indeed why Martin Luther placed it as the first of the six chief parts. Not because it was most important, or that that's the thing that you've got to focus on, but because in the law we see our need for God. And then, following that in the creed, 
we find out who God is and how he loves us, what all he has done for us, and that all of his promises are fulfilled in Christ. Joined with Christ, we walk in the ways of Christ. As the spirit of the living Christ and of his resurrection is given to us, the very breath of God, the Holy Spirit, as he dwells within us, we will do the things that please God. So the law also describes who we are. Eighth graders, remember, by this all men will know you are my disciples if you love one another. Love does no harm to the neighbor, Paul says in Romans. Therefore, it is the fulfillment of the law. Love of God, love of neighbor. Oh, that we could keep that perfectly. But we do not. We struggle with a sinful flesh that always tends to focus on me. What's in it for me? What will exalt me? What can I get? How can I avoid responsibilities? All of those things. It's a me-focused thing. And so we really kind of like the law. But we hate it because it convicts us that we do not keep it. The gospel calls us to a whole new way of freedom and peace. No longer are we led along by the demands that we must fulfill. But now, filled with the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of Christ, we will walk in the ways of Almighty God. We will live as Christ lived. As we are nurtured daily in the Holy Word, and as we receive our Lord in the sacraments, as he feeds us with his own body and blood to be our food and our strength for the coming week, to remove our sins, to give us the assurance of our life with him, and to lead us forward by his power and strength, we will continue to grow in the wisdom that comes from God alone in the peace that he grants through sins forgiven, and in the ability and the desire, there's the biggie, to walk with the Lord in the ways that please him. It doesn't become a chore for us like the law was. The law was a chore. I've got to do this, I've got to do that. I've got to live a certain way, then I'll be acceptable. But that's not what we are called to as Christians. We are called to the gospel. To the freedom that is ours in Jesus Christ. To receive the Holy Spirit whom he gives to us in abundance so that we will walk in the ways of the Lord. No longer being dragged along or forced this way or that. But freely desiring to reach out and give and to serve even as he has served us. We see the life that our Lord lived for us. And we rejoice. We rejoice as brothers and sisters in Christ that we have been counted worthy in the blood of the Lamb to stand before our Almighty God as his children. Not because of anything we did, but as we said in John chapter 1 during Advent and Christmas, because we are born of God. And I will ask you again today, did any of you ask your parents if you could be born? No. And so it is for those born of the Spirit of God. We would not know God, except that he has revealed himself to us in his word. And he has revealed himself to us as the God of all compassion and mercy. Is there judgment? Oh, absolutely. But he calls us away from that. He calls us to come to him, that with him we may walk in the ways of Christ. We may walk in the path that is set before us, a path of living with Christ and in Christ. And indeed, being little Christs, as Luther said, to one another and to the world. 
That's not something we can accomplish on our own. It is something that the Lord accomplishes in us. And let that be our goal for the coming year. To recognize that our life is a life with Christ. A life in Christ. And a life fully motivated and enacted by Christ. Who dwells within us by his most Holy Spirit. He is the way, the truth, and the life. And our life in the Lord is a way of life. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit.